Good evening and welcome to MTV's News Update for today, September 20, 2022. I'm Sandy Ramotar for Solar Top Headlines. More persons registered for Fisher Folk Cash Grant than estimated. Project launch to strengthen justice for Indigenous women and girls. New Abrams Oil School to reopen in 2023. And in sport, Christenberg Wismer makes statement in win over West Ram drought in the Gael Tradewind Tanker on the 18 Football League. Now for the news in detail. Minister of Agriculture Zofika Mustafa says more persons are on the list to receive the $150,000 one-off cash grant for Fisher Folk that previously estimated. Minister Mustafa spoke with MTV's news update Rihanna Griffith where he explains how this process will be done transparently. While the government had estimated 5,000 beneficiaries for the one-off grant for Fisher Folk, officials are now finding that this number is almost doubled. The current list shows that some 9,000 persons have registered to receive this one-off payout, and this number could still potentially increase, as there have been reports of cases where persons were turned away from registering. When we plan it, we plan around that oh, um, we had about 5,000 fishermen, but now we've seen the list is about over 9,000. A verification process is ongoing to determine whether the 9,000 persons are indeed supposed to receive this grant. However, at this time, Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa says he is hopeful the list actually reflects the legitimate beneficiaries. This process has lasted for about the verification for the fishermen, lasted for about almost three months because we didn't want, as the Vice President rightly said, we didn't want it to happen like how the flood relief happened. We hope that this here is a true reflection of fisher folks across the country. At this stage, the minister is depending on other fisher folk to help remove persons who should not receive this benefit. Minister Mustafa's call to the fisher folk was also backed by Vice President Dr. Barra Jagdew, who told the gathering it is important that the rightful beneficiaries receive this grant, since it is no secret that the fishing community has been facing challenges. The government has continuously made it clear it is committed to ensuring cash grants are distributed in a free and transparent manner. In May, President Irfan Ali announced the one-off cash grant valued at $150,000. Rihanna Griffith for MTV News Update. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony has assured that Guyana's sports of entry are being monitored to prevent monkeypox cases from entering Guyana. However, because of the long incubation period, infected persons can still enter the country. Jessica Canada has more. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony says it is possible for persons to pass through the airports and enter Guyana during the incubation period of the monkeypox virus, but not develop rashes until later on when they are already in the country. The incubation period is the interval from when someone becomes infected to the onset of symptoms for monkeypox. This is typically between 6 to 13 days, but can range from 5 to 21 days. He noted that while airport staff has been sensitized, health personnel are also stationed at the ports of entry. You know, at each one of the, uh, the ports of entry, we do have um, staff from the ministry that is assigned to these ports of entry. And we have sensitized them uh, to the signs and symptoms of monkeypox. It's not a very sensitive method. Uh, in terms of detection because someone can be infected with monkeypox and come through the airport during the incubation period. The virus is only transmissible while rashes are visible on an infected person. It is no longer transmissible when lesions have scabbed over and healed. Transmission occurs through contact with respiratory secretions, skin lesions of an infected person, or recently contaminated objects. The World Health Organization declared the number of monkeypox cases reported globally declined by 21% a few weeks ago, after a month-long trend of rising infections. 
There have been 62,406 cases since the WHO declared the outbreak a global health emergency in July. Minister Antony assured that the ministry will continue to monitor the situation and look out for possible infections. While we are on alert, it is very difficult uh, to detect uh, persons unless they have rashes and so forth. So, but nevertheless, we still have that mechanism in place and people have been trained uh, to ask questions and so forth. Symptoms to watch out for are fever, chills, swollen lymph nodes, exhaustion, muscle aches and backache, headaches and respiratory symptoms which may be experienced either before or after a rash appears. Recommended precautions include avoiding close skin-to-skin -skin contact or physical intimacy with people who have rashes resembling monkeypox patients, avoiding contact with objects and materials that the person with monkeypox has used, and frequent hand washing. Reporting for MTV's News Update, Jessica Callender. You are watching MTV's News Update. More news on the other side of the break. Stay with us. Are you running around looking for construction materials? Well, run down to Lens for affordable, high-quality building supplies. We have the widest range of grade A floor and wall tiles in any shape, size, and designs. And all types of ceramics, porcelain glazed and full-body porcelain. We stock the largest collection of large format tiles. Check out our porcelain slabs as big as 10 feet by 4.5 feet. Add a bit of elegance with our large range of decorative molding. Our line of PPG paints will give you vibrant colors that won't fade. With our wall and ceiling gypsum system, it's light, durable and fast. So come down to Lens at 136 Cher Street, which is next to Buddy's and Pizza Hut for that 31 years of Lens quality. Live your fantasy at Fantasy Game & Lounge. Win big daily. Millions in cash prizes every week. Now located at Giftland Mall. Millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Planning a cleanup? We can help. Sivon's waste management skip bins can be provided for home renovation projects, yard cleanups, or construction sites. It's simple. Step one, just pick up the phone and give us a call. Step two, we deliver the skip bin size of your choice. Step three, load the skip with all of your junk. And finally, step four, we take it all away. It's that simple. Bins are also available in various sizes, so there's no job that's too big or too small. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. This is MTV's News Update. Welcome back. Students who are attending the Aurora Secondary School on a shift basis will be able to access the new Abramsville Secondary School in 2023 as construction is 75% complete. Here's Luan Williams. MTV News Update during a trip to Region 2, Pumaru and Supernam visited the construction site of the new Abram Zool Secondary School. Vice Chairperson for Region 2, Yumis Audit, told MTV News Update that 75% of the new school building is now complete. Some of the remaining work remaining on the school and which is, which is presently um, happening there is the tiling of the floor with Torasso, um, installation of the remaining windows electrical installation. The school once completed will cater for 750 children. It will feature an open space for meetings, a cafeteria and mathematics and information technology laboratories. The site was turned in June 2021. 
Senior Minister in the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Rajni Singh, in November 2021 had stated that the school would be ready for September 2022. However, the Vice Chairperson told MTV News Update that the contractor could not honor his deadline and so students, who are currently attending the Aurora Secondary School on a shift basis, will be able to access the new school in the new year. So indeed, the contracting period, um, the contractor could not have reached the deadline, so he wrote and asked for extended period. And that is for January, we, are, um, we expect to, for that school to reopen. So to the students now who are attending, who, the students from the school who are attending Aurora Secondary on a shift base can now have the access from January at the new building at Abramsville. This contract was awarded to builders hardware and general supplies to the tune of $585 million. The Abramsville Secondary School is currently under construction since it was in a deplorable state. Women living with PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome who are part of the Sisterhood Support Group to share their stories and the struggles of living with this disorder. In observance of Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome PCOS Awareness Month, MTV News Update spoke with women living with PCOS who highlighted how this disorder has impacted their mental health. My biggest challenge was like, not be, being able to like, do as much as I want to because of the symptoms that I have, the sy everybody's symptoms are, are a bit different. That, that was a real challenge as well. Anxiety, depression, sometimes being, a being in a room with your family, and then all of a sudden you just get this anger, you don't know where it's coming from. Or sometimes somebody just might just say something and it just trigger you, just like that. Sometimes you can't sleep or going to bed going to bed and then waking up tired in the morning like if you didn't have no night rest at all. Being a young professional, battling two jobs, maintaining leadership roles in different um, fields, you know, sometimes it can get very overwhelming. I feel tired easily on some days that I don't even feel like getting out of bed and getting things done. Having hormonal dis disorder it affects someone mentally emotionally physically and when that takes a toll on somebody it really brings them down to an extent that they can reach to running on e i've only learned to manage pcos this year earlier this year and it's been about five months and i have had pcos from my very first period it has been rough but i wouldn't say i would blame my bad moods or anxiety or different things that happen throughout life on PCOS. Um, it's just something that is a part of me and I manage it. PCOS, according to the Centers for Disease Control, is a health condition affecting how a woman's ovaries function and can result in a wide range of symptoms including but not limited to irregular periods, high levels of androgen, enlarged ovaries and fertility issues. Locally, women living with PCOS are supported by Sisterhood Support. This is an organization comprised of volunteers who work to raise awareness of this disorder within Guyana, providing educational and support services to help people understand what the disorder is and how you can live with it. The group also provides a platform for people diagnosed with PCOS to help them overcome the syndrome and decrease the impact of its associated health problems. Founder of Sisterhood Support, Kimberly Mambot, said in addition to having psychologists on board, a support group will be launched later this month. We do have planned within this month where we'll be launching our safe space and we will allocate at least two days per month where we'll have persons who are interested, it's totally voluntary, to come and meet. You know, we're going to have conversations, we're going to talk a little bit more on PCOS, we'll have a little fellowship activity. Persons can get to meet other persons to know that they're not alone, they're not living with this disorder alone, and they can be able to relate to other persons who are living with PCOS. Reporting for MTV's News Update, Jessica Callender. 
A four-year-old project has been launched to increase the realization of rights to inclusive quality and gender responsive justice for women, girls, and indigenous victims of sexual and gender-based violence in Guyana. More in this report. The Justice Education Society, JESS, launched the Strengthening Justice for Women, Girls and Indigenous Peoples in Guyana project earlier today. This project is funded by the High Commission of Canada to Guyana. It will take place from March 1st to December 31st, 2025. JESS is a Canadian organization which empowers justice institutions through comprehensive capacity building and training of justice professionals to improve the delivery of justice and equitable access to legal services. This project will focus primarily on Region 1. An estimated over 10,000 Indigenous people will directly benefit, while intermediaries such as the Guyana Police Force GPF, and Chamber of the Director of Public Prosecutions DPP, the Judiciary, the National Tushaus Council, Red Thread and other women's groups and civil society organizations will benefit from increased capacity to deliver services. This is according to Project Director Lisa Thompson. We are also going to be working with the Ministry of Indian Affairs. We were asked to look at designing and implementing a program that looks at cultural sensitivity for members, for service providers, so not just the Guyana Police Force, but other service providers. The focus at the national level will be to reduce impunity for severe violence against women and girls, sexual violence, homicides, and gender-based assaults, while at the local level the project will seek to improve access to justice for Indigenous women, girls, and peoples, taking into consideration the added complexity that COVID-19 brings. By improving both the access of women and girls to justice institutions, as well as the actual capacity of the justice system to respond to sexual and gender-based violence, the project will empower women and girls to exercise their rights and support a more inclusive, gender-responsive, and culturally aware society. High Commissioner of Canada, His Excellency Mark Berman, said the project targets multiple crucial areas. The project that we're launching today cross-cuts three areas of critical importance to the government of Guyana. Indigenous welfare, sexual and gender-based violence, or SGBV, and access to justice, particularly for the most vulnerable and the marginalized in society. Reporting for MTV's News Update, Jessica Callender. More news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Are you building or renovating your home? Then come to Beeson for a wide range of aluminum and UPVC windows and doors. Get from single hung sash, on it, casement, sliding windows, plus sliding and swinging doors. All our products can be customized and fitted with insect screens and are sealed tight to withstand harsh weather conditions. At Beeson, we also carry commercial, glass and French doors, showcases, aluminum louvers, curtain walls, aluminum rails, plus sliding and frameless shower doors. So look no further. Visit our showroom today at lot 1228 Eccles Industrial Site or call 622-4197 or 623-4197. Peace on windows and doors. Filled with pride in Guyana by Guyanese. With the pride and joy that comes with being the owner of a small or medium business, comes the hustle and hectic days where there's so much to do and only one of you. We understand all those times you wished there were eight days in the week. All those days you wished you had four hands. That's why GTT Business Solutions has introduced Connects. We're talking internet speeds of up to 600 megabits per second with up to 6,000 minutes, including calls to USA and Canada. Helpful features like caller ID and call waiting. Get up to two landline numbers and the convenience of having it all on one bill. So breathe easy, reliable and affordable help is here with GTT Connects. GTT, together we rise smarter.
Hello, homeowners and painters. We're happy with the response we've gotten. Thank you. As such, we're now offering a multi-surface roof, floor, and wall potty routine paint at a special reduced price of $2,500 per 1.5 gallons bucket. This paint can be used on wood, concrete, zinc, and metal. Don't forget we have a new shipment of oil paint with shades such as Morning Glory, Nantucket Grey or White, and many more familiar shades to choose from. The water-based paint at $3,600 per gallon and the oil-based paint for $4,300 per gallon. Come into our showroom to view the colors and let's beautify our surroundings. Global sales and distribution, Lot 14 to be Quabbin Street, opposite King's Jewelry World between Waterloo and Carmichael Street. Look for the red front building. Telephone 504-3908 or 6220601. Regent and Royal Paints created for you at the most competitive price. See you soon! You are tuned to MTV's News Update. El Dorado and CPL on Monday evening celebrated its 10th anniversary with the unveiling of its special edition Master Blenders Rum. Here is more. To celebrate El Dorado's 10th anniversary as the official spirit of the Caribbean Premier League, the Damararo Distillers Limited, maker of El Dorado Rum, on Monday evening launched its special edition Master Blend Rum in the presence of several dignitaries and team players of the Guyana Amazon Warriors. The launch was held at the new Pegasus Suites. The partnership between CPL and DDL dates back to the inaugural league in 2013. And chairman of the DDL group of companies, Komal Samaru, says he believes this partnership was one born in heaven, while emphasizing that rum has a deep connection with the sugar industry. And as cricket has evolved from the days when you sit down for five days and look at a test match, to when you go now and sit for five hours and enjoy yourself and get a result, likewise, rum has evolved from being a very cheap, simple spirit to being a very sophisticated, stylish drink. Meanwhile, CPL's commercial director, Jamie Stewart, then told the gathering that he views the partnership between CPL and El Dorado as an important one, while noting that indeed the El Dorado's branded products help to create an atmosphere at the CPL. The Master Blender CPL Rum is a blend of the Port Moron Double Wooden Pot Still, Diamond Coffee Still, and Friends of Ali Still. Earlier this year, El Dorado and CPL extended its partnership for another five years. Digicel and Tuesday signed an agreement with the Health Ministry to lend $6 million in support to its special needs project. Here is more. With this agreement, Digicel has committed a sum of $60 million to the Ministry of Health, which will start the training for individuals and professionals within the special needs sector over a three-year period as part of their ongoing support and commitment to special needs and rehabilitation services. This agreement will support the ministry and will provide support to families living with disabilities in communities across Guyana. The long-term vision is to create world-class development facilities for children with special needs across the 10 regions. CEO of Digital Gregory Dean says he is hopeful this financial commitment will impact the life of many, even though it is a small gesture. Meanwhile, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Malcolm Watkins, expressed gratitude to Digicel for this initiative. He said the ministry is committed to the partnership that will facilitate and foster long-term enhancement to the health sector. We now take a look at tips for healthy living with Norman Gobin. Top 10 Medical Causes of Death in Guyana Coming in at number 2 Stroke, 13% of medical related deaths What is a stroke? 
A stroke occurs when a blood vessel in the brain ruptures and bleeds, or when there's a blockage in the blood supply to the brain. The rupture or blockage prevents blood and oxygen from reaching the brain's tissues. Without oxygen, brain cells and tissues become damaged and begin to die within minutes. There are three primary types of strokes. Transient ischemic attack TIA, involves a blood clot that typically reverses on its own. Ischemic stroke involves a blockage caused by either a clot or plaque in the artery. The symptoms and complications of ischemic stroke can last longer than those of a TIA or may become permanent. Hemorrhagic stroke is caused by either a burst or a leaking blood vessel that seeps into the brain. Signs and symptoms. The sooner a person having a stroke gets care, the better their outcome is likely to be. For this reason, it's helpful to know the signs of a stroke so you can act quickly. Stroke symptoms can include paralysis, numbness or weakness in the arm, face and leg, especially in one side of the body, trouble speaking or understanding others, slurred speech, confusion, disorientation or lack of responsiveness, sudden behavioral changes, especially increased agitation, vision problems, such as trouble seeing in one or both eyes, with vision blackened or blurred or double vision, trouble walking, loss of balance or coordination, dizziness, severe sudden headache with an unknown cause, nausea or vomiting. Treatment. Treatment depends on the type of stroke you have, including which part of the brain was affected and what caused it. Strokes are usually treated with medication. This includes medicines to prevent and dissolve blood clots, reduce blood pressure, and reduce cholesterol levels. In some cases, procedures may be required to remove blood clots. Surgery may also be required to treat brain swelling and reduce the risk of further bleeding, if this was the cause of your stroke. Prevention. You can significantly reduce the risk of having stroke by eating a healthy diet, taking regular exercise, following the recommended guidelines on alcohol intake, not drinking more than 14 units a week, and not smoking. If you have a condition that increases your risk of a stroke, it's important to manage it effectively. For example, taking medicine you have been prescribed to lower blood pressure or cholesterol levels. If you have had a stroke or TIA in the past, these measures are particularly important because your risk of having another stroke is greatly increased. The ISG and MTB's sport update comes up after the break. Stay tuned. Why you minding me business? I noticed you yesterday, you're there watching, 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 watching. Today you're there here again. Why you minding me business? I fed up your nosy self. Yeah, baby, I just love your windows. Why are you bothering me window? Like your house in a window? What kind of window really in your house? I got some old louvers windows that I need to change. Louvers! <laughs> Girl, I let you in for a secret, right? Beeson got a special deal right now. You go down there, you buy 10 window, you get a free bathroom window. Oh, for the love of God, try with them louvers window and go down to Beeson and modernize. Beeson windows and doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Farmers and the members of the public in general are being advised that tampering with drainage and irrigation structures in any way is prohibited under the Drainage and Irrigation Act. So too are practices that result in damage to access dams, such as using an inadequate length of tube to irrigate farmlands, resulting in erosion of the earthen dams. Also contrary to the Drainage and Irrigation Act is the practice of erecting structures or planting on government reserves. This will not be condoned. These reserves are to be clear at all times to provide access for the excavation of the channels. Livestock farmers should also be aware that they are liable for any damages caused by their cattle or swine to dams or reserves alongside DNI channels, as is the case when the animals cross these channels. Individuals wishing to erect bridges across DNI structures should first contact the NDIA before doing so. Those found guilty under the Act are liable to fines and imprisonment for up to three months. A message from the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority, Ministry of Agriculture. Modern up 
optical service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. The Central Housing and Planning Authority has employed the services of Rangers and we're kindly asking you, the members of the public, for your full cooperation as we seek to bring order and semblance to communities under our management. Our Rangers are responsible for the monitoring of schemes for contravention under the Tongue and Country Planning Act and agreement of sales issued to allottees responding appropriately to reports made by members of the public or allottees in schemes where there are illegal activities in contravention of the CHMPA's policies and the Tongue and Country Planning Act to undertake investigations into report on the misuse of the roads, squatting, animal nuisance and dumping of garbage and derelict vehicles in schemes, issue notices for illegal construction and letters regarding penalties to be paid for the storage of materials on the roads within our schemes. Our rangers will be properly identifiable at all times, as they have all been outfitted with the agency's badge. From time to time, they will be in your community, so in order for them to function effectively and better serve you, your cooperation is needed. A message from the Central Housing and Planning Authority. FiberTech materials are used in a multitude of ways from repairing and fabrication of auto body, fishing and household items. We have available various fiberglass mattings, resin, mold releases, brushes and rollers for all of your repair needs. We offer technical advice and free training to ensure you get the job done. For further information, call us at 2206907 or 2209192. Get the right seal right now from Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc., your immediate SKF sealing solutions. The SKF seal jet machine is capable of building seals from 5 millimeter to 600 millimeter in diameter in under five minutes. With technical support readily available, you can get a customized seal to suit virtually any industrial application, like buffer, rod, wiper, and piston seals. SKF seal jet machine, now at Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. Guyana Amazon Warriors all around the Kimo Pole and other members of the team interacted with several young aspiring cricketers on Tuesday morning at the Marriott Hotel as they sought to share positive life lessons. Odin Smith runs for Beaton, Budesh Moti and several others were among the Amazon Warriors to take the time out and have a bit of cricket fun with those in attendance. Ghana Amazon Warriors all around the Kimo Pole when speaking to the young cricketers have said they must be focused on their goals and not give in to the disappointments that will surface during their quest for success. I just want to encourage each and every one of you to let's keep following your dreams, you know. Keep working hard, stay disciplined, stay grounded always, and be humble always. And no matter how far you reach in life, just try to stay as humble as possible and go step by step. And when those disappointment comes, just remember that it's not the end of the road. You know, once you have life, you have everything. So just keep pushing. Warriors fast bowler Odin Smith spoke of the impact mentors have on youth development both on and off the field of play. Um, sometimes you need persons who have been there before um, to you know, tell you what it's like, you know what you need to do. Um, you know, so I think it's important to have a mentor, um, as I said, somebody to ensure the ropes. Um, you know, wish to be mentors for you know, these young people, you know, you know, tell them what it's like to be there. About disappointments, um, you know, tell him that it's not the end of the road when you get disappointed. Um, you know, so it's really good to have mentors along the way. Some of the schools are part of the event were New Camelville Secondary, Cummings Lodge, Ams Grove, Bush Lot, Fort Wellington, and Boxton Secondary. Over the years, the Ghana Amazon Warriors have sought to play their part off the field by taking part in several community programs designed to give back to their fan base. 
Meanwhile, the Warriors will be in action on Wednesday when they take on the Jamaica Tullowers as they look to keep their playoff hopes alive in this year's Hero CPL. Wednesday's match falls off at 19 hours. We tell you now that all wrong the Chanel Henry started the bat making a near half century to the West Indies women. However, this could not stop them from losing their first ODI against the New Zealand women. Confusion about who had won the match took over at the end of the first ODI between West Indies and New Zealand in Antigua as bad light ended play in a rain hit match, according to ESPN Crick Info. Chasing 169 in a 35 overs a side contest following a rain delay, New Zealand needed 10 off 12 balls to win with 5 wickets down, and the umpires declared the match over following bad light as the cutoff time had been reached. New Zealand women were declared winners by the Duckworth Lewis Stern method, defeating West Indies women by 5 runs at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua. In the first, CG United won the international. The match was reduced to 35 overs per side due to wet conditions. West Indies batted first and Rashada Williams and Natasha McLean combined for a solid opening partnership for the West Indies. The pair added 29 before Williams fell for 19 off 28 balls, which included four fours. The 83-run partnership between Chanel Henry and Kishona Knight rebuilt the West Indies innings. Chanel Henry noted that she set herself a personal goal approaching this series to do well for her team. Uh, personally, I think um, as an all-rounder in this team now, uh, an established all-rounder, I think, batting at number seven. Um, if I could uh, get 30-plus runs every match consistently, um, being the opening bowler, uh, getting wickets consistently for this team, then I think personally that will help my, my, my cricket stats and also help the team performance going forward. The West Indies posted 168 for 7 from their 35 overs. Amelia Kerr and Maddie Green took the New Zealand innings to within touching distance of victory, but Matthews struck in her sixth over to remove Green and Lauren down to put the West Indies back on course for victory. West Indies were gathering momentum before the match was called with New Zealand on 159 for 5 after 33 overs. According to the Duckworth Lewis Stern calculations, New Zealand were 5 runs ahead of the 154 needed for victory at that stage of the inning. The second match will be played on Wednesday at the same venue. Christian Berg, Wismar's secondary, showed up in a major way on Sunday when action kicked off the Nagayal Tradewind Tanker on the 18 Football League at the Ministry of Education ground, Carfest Avenue. In the match, Devon Gilbert and Amali King found the back of the net in the 25th and 29th minutes to give the Christian Berg control in the match for the only two goals of the first half. Coming out of the break, Christian Berg were able to extend their lead thanks to a Darnell Warner strike. A double from Daniel Adolf to help seal the victory to hand the Linden School an emphatic 5-0 victory. That has brought us to the end of Sport Update, which was brought to you with the kind compliments of ISG. More after the break. Over the years, ISG has been providing all sectors across Guyana with quality products and outstanding customer service. Proud distributor of NP and Ultra lubricants, engineered for tropical conditions. International trucks and parts, leading the change. SEM machinery, a Caterpillar brand, SKF bearings and mounted products, NAPA batteries, Tide power generators, discover the greatest source of power. Industrial Supply of Guyana Inc. The best opportunity to make the right choice. And that brings down the court on tonight's newscast, but before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. 
four persons registered for Fisher Folk Cash Grant, an estimated project launch to strengthen justice for Indigenous women and girls, and the new Abramsville Secondary School to reopen in 2023. And in sport, Christianburg Wismer makes statement in win over West Rumbrals, Jenny Guile, Tradewind Tanker on the 18th Football League. Catch our rebroadcast tomorrow, 6 hours 30. Don't forget to like our Facebook page, where the news can be heard live at 19 hours 30. You can also check out our website at mtvgy.com for these and other stories. On behalf of our news and technical teams, Sandy Ramakar saying stay safe and goodbye for now.